back, everybody. Uh, can you see it right there? Big iron thing on a little metal thing. My block is back. Got it back yesterday. They called me around three o'clock. I was just closing out work. I was like, you know what? Get off work at four o'clock. I'm gonna drop this stupid car off. Go get this thing. So no time I was out there. I've been waiting so long for this and they got it done. Uh, turned out well. Uh, the block is in great shape. They did a few things I didn't know they were going to do because I kind of told them they didn't have to, but they put in freeze plugs, put in all the uh, galley plugs and everything. Uh, so it basically came back ready to assemble. I did do some light cleaning on it just to make sure the little hidden passages or in the rough areas were wipe free of any debris. Um, it's good, man. It's, it's in great shape. The head deck came up, I think he said, to 90... Uh, 9.018 so it's like seven thousandths off on the head so that's going to change the head gasket i use we have to go to a little thicker head gasket to keep the same compression ratio i'm shooting for and those are all things you got to ask your machinist when you're done with your block you got to know the numbers that they um, come up with on these and and work specifically with the final dimensions and make sure they have those accurately labeled or at least know when you pick it up what they came up to i'll take you a little tour around it a little surprise. There she is in her majesty. So as I mentioned, the head deck was taken about seven thousandths down to square it and to get any irregularity out of it. Nice and silvery. Uh, front area here, they put the cam bearings in for me. I mentioned they put in the freeze and, and galley plugs for me. Excuse me while my stupid phone makes noise. Pardon me. There, shut that guy up. Uh, same deal on the back, galley plugs, freeze plugs in, which they aren't really freeze plugs. They function as freeze plugs, but that's not what they're there for. Those are casting holes where they actually pour the iron in when they make the block. But since they've popped out when people have left water in their blocks, people always assume they were there to relieve stress. Um, they don't always do that though. That's not their intention. At times they will come out the side in a hole they have made themselves. Uh, the lifter galley, all ready to go story on that might as well start telling it now after i got it back i took a lifter and i was checking bores i have three lifter bores i think this one here on cylinder eight one on cylinder seven and one on cylinder uh, not eight cylinder six and one on cylinder seven that the bearing the bearing the lifter doesn't go in all the way so there's a burr in the bore i called the machine shop this morning asking about that and uh they said all they usually do if that's the circumstance that happens is they'll take a one of those two stone brake cylinder hones and just give it like one or two passes and they'll take the burr out and the without really changing or opening up the diameter of the uh, lifter bore uh, that's what i'm going to do i ordered a, one of those two stone brake hones and i'm just going to give it like one quick whoop whoop with that and uh, until the lifter goes down it should only take one max two passes i think to get it to go um, that'll be a separate part of the video now the surprise, let me uh, set this camera down and we'll go over that. Surprise! I could not sit still last night. I got this thing back and I just had to do something. So I went ahead and put the crank in. Now I didn't rush, so, I mean I kind of did, but I did all the proper steps required before I put the crank in and uh, I've got them up on the board. I took all of this stuff into consideration. I'll show this uh, separately and kind of talk over all the numbers, but all the clearances were checked with both a mic and calipers and also double checked with plastic gauge with the final torque on the mains. Um, the bearings I used, I ended up using the Kings that came with the kit. Separate story, um, I'll talk here, I'll probably just insert a little backstory on the bearing situation on video in this part, but uh, I used the Kings. Uh, the red stuff you see here is, I used a lot of assembly lube because I don't know how much is enough and too much is always better than not enough. So I used a lot of this uh, Ultra Slick Permatex assembly lube on the lower end. That's what I saw a couple of guys I'm starting to really respect on YouTube who build engines. I've seen them use that with, and they've always said it works great. And it is very sticky stuff. It stays in place. Um, this has been... I use just a lot, but it's kind of dripped down out of the oil galleys, but crank's turning good. Let me go over a couple of rolls here. 
Let's see, I'll find my keyway. So the crank's turning nice and smoothly. There are no resistance points whatsoever, and I don't hear any metal to metal scraping, which would be a bad sign. So as far as I know, and until I am proven wrong, the crank is in properly. So the next step, which is gonna be part of this video, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start measuring my ring clearances, and I am going to start installing pistons. So we'll get set up for that, and I'll guide you through the process on how I do that. Okay, before we get into the uh, piston setup here, I'm going to go over this backstory on the bearings. As you see in the picture here, I measured through, these are the rod clearances, but I also measured mains, even though I didn't have the block. But they told me the align home was right. I assumed that the bores were in spec so that with the normal bearing information I had, I could just measure the uh, main journals and then go off of the reference on the bearings themselves and make sure I had the right specifications for oil clearance, and I do. But we'll go over the picture with the oil clearance because of the way it played out with the bearings that I decided to use. So the factory main on a crank is four, a 2.450. Mine at the lowest point I could find was 2.4497. The rod journals factory is 2.10, and I measured the rod, the rod journals. They all came out to 2.10. So that's a really well-made crankshaft from Eagle. Now the connecting rod oil clearance, this is where I had to make that decision on bearings. The factory spec for Chevrolet is 2.1006, so 6 ten thousandths to 2.1031 or 0 0.10 and 31 ten thousandths. What I got when I installed the bearings, and keep in mind, this is with a micrometer. This is with the most accurate tool you can use. With the King bearings, I got 2.1017 to 2.1022. That is right down the middle of spec, and uh, it's perfect, actually. But look over here onto the right of that where it says SP. That's the sealed power ring, uh, bearings that I bought that were the tri-metal I think what thought would be an upgrade. I can't believe it. These are standard size bearings. And look at the oil clearance. 2.1028 to 2.1033. And that's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. That is insanely high up towards the maximum allowable clearance. So you know what I did? I put the brakes on it and said, I'm not using the sealed powers because I wasn't gonna order a third set of bearings to cross check and I wasn't gonna just order a 1,000th undersized set of sealed powers to get, knock off a 10th to get 18 to 20 where the Kings came out of the kit. So lesson learned by me, if your parts are assembled as a kit, especially by a company that is known in the industry like Eagle, just go with it, verify it, but go with the materials they say they give you because I basically wasted $50. I do have a good set of rod bearings that may go in another vehicle, but it was wasted time and money. So that's the lesson on the rod bearing clearance and main bearing clearance. Um, just measure like you're supposed to, but if you get a set, trust that the set has already been checked by the people putting it together to be in tolerance. Now onto the pistons. Okay, onto the rings here. So I've got here is my set, top set of compression rings. They uh, are, again, set from this factory, from spec to this uh, kit from Eagle. So learning the lesson from, or I should say verifying the lesson from the rod bearings and mains, I'm going to go ahead and put these in. And what I expect is maybe somewhere between 16 and 20 thou clearance on these rings to be in spec for a uh, 4030 or any, well, anybody uh, who makes the rings in a standard size over should be within the, still the same clearance, just a little bit bigger overall diameter. But what I'm looking for is somewhere between 16 and 20 thousandths of ring gap after I get uh, this in the bore and check it with the feeler gauges, which is I'm gonna what I'm gonna get set up to do right now. All right, so First thing I'm going to do is just get a little bit of lubrication in the cylinder bore there. You never want to put metal to metal without a lubrication. And the way to do this, I saw, is you take the ring 
and you stand it up with the gap towards you, you start inserting it in and then roll it until it is inside the bore. Then what you're going to use is an actual piston to square the ring up and make sure it's at an even depth. So take your piston gently, don't want to scratch, scratch the sides or anything, and just kind of give it a little press in there to square up the ring. Then you'll take your feeler gauges and check that clearance. So I've got my feeler gauges. I'm going to start with the lowest one that I would want to see, which would be uh, 16 ten thousandths, or 16 thousandths, I should say. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've got my 0.016 inch feeler gauge right here. And I see the ring gap. And I'm going to try to slide that feeler gauge in there. And you know what? It goes and there's a little slop. So it is bigger than 16. That is a good start. So we're going to go right up to the kind of the max I would think it would be, which is 20. I've got my 20 thousandths right here. Let's see if that goes in. And it does. So I have got at least 20 clearance right there. Make sure that's squared. The 20 goes in and feels pretty good. So I got 20 thou right there. Let's go up to 22 and see if a 22 will fit. I hope it doesn't because that's getting a little bit too big. And it's got a bit of resistance. So I can't say it evenly goes in at 22. It's fighting it a little bit. So we're going to be between 20, let's call it 21 and just make absolutely sure on that. I'm going to go ahead and square this up again. So I've been, I'm looking at the, it wasn't exactly square that I look at it. I'm using as a reference the Ringland to make sure I can see an even amount of the Ringland throughout the cylinder to know that I'm square in the bore. So that was a little off. And I can change the results a little bit. But I'm still going to go up to the 21 and check that. Yep, it's 21. So my clearance there is 21 and that is absolutely in spec. I think uh, going upwards of like 25, 26 is the end you would want to be at with a NA motor, but probably where you want to be at, where you would want to be at if you were going to boost. So with a 21, I'm totally fine with that. But now I'm going to go ahead and check the second one. That will be the second compression ring. And as long as we've still got the right tolerance there, I'm going to put this set of rings because I have measured it in this bore on the piston I'm going to use in this cylinder. All right, I've got the second compression ring in and squared. So I had 21 on the one above it. I'm going to start with 21 on this one. 21 goes. I mean, it, just, it, it goes. So those are like identical. That's great to see. I'm gonna, it felt a little tighter than the uh, 21 did on the top ring, so I'm going to go to the 20 and check the 20, see if it feels just right. And it does. So 21 to 20, that's pretty dang close. I mean, super close. So the rings are good to go. Uh, going to go ahead and get these put on the piston and uh, make sure that the... Uh, dots are oriented right. I don't think the top one has a dot. I think the top one is bi-directional, but the bottom one I know does have a dot. So that dot has to face up when you put it on the piston just for information. Okay, so I think I am ready to put the first piston in. I'm gonna start with cylinder number two. That's where I was measuring from. And I've got the rings installed on the piston, all five of them the two oil control, the oil wiper, top and bottom compression rings. If you look at the top of this piston, I'll try to do this and not lose my marks, which I don't think I have yet. I made marks. These little black Sharpie marks on the top of the piston are to indicate where my ring gaps are. Starting with the lowest ring, then the oil wiper parting line, this top oil control ring, Second compression, first compression. You see how they're pretty well evenly staggered across the cylinder. So that's what you want to see, or how you want to set up those piston uh, rings. You don't want the gaps to overlap at all. And you got five of them, so you can't do them at 12, you know, three, six, and eight, or nine. There's going to be an uneven, or a, 
five split on that. Now, so that's all ready to go. I've got the bearing set in the lower of the uh, rod cap right there. I have made sure this piston has a dot and that is going to face the front of the motor. And did I already screw that up? I think I'm glad I'm checking this. this is why we, ch no, no I didn't. Yeah, the chamfer on the rod, the big end of the rod is facing forward. And that is so that goes towards the crank and the flat side is gonna go against opposing piston number one. So that is all set up correctly. So the next thing to do is wipe down your cylinder bore with a clean towel. Make sure there's no sharp debris, pieces of metal, shavings, all that in there. Give that a good wipe down. And I've also made sure that the crank shaft is rotated so that the rod journal is furthest away. So as I push this piston in, it's not going to come through and have the end of the rods hit that crank right away and nick it. You still have to watch it no matter how far you put it in, but that gives you more throw so that when you get underneath, you can get your rod, top rod bearing in and then uh, clamp it down. So let's go ahead and get some oil in the cylinder. Just gonna oil the cylinder up good. Now what I'm using here is 40 weight non-detergent oil. Just giving that a good wipe down across all the cylinder area in here. And I'm going to put some on. Uh, I'm going to put some on the piston uh, wrist pin right here, and give that a work back and forth. Get that oil spread out on that wrist pin all the way. You can feel it as it fills that gap up. You can actually feel the oil doing its job, giving you some clearance. Then let me wipe this excess oil off the top. Here, now I've got my piston ring compressor right here. So last check that my gaps are right. They are correct. You wanna start sliding your piston into your ring compressor. And I have not done this before, so be patient as I figure this out. All right, piston is in. The rings have made contact all the way in top, so I know the rings are completely in. One last verification, dot to front, chamfer towards the crank counterweight. Then you just take the piston, get it started in the bore, press down as far as it will go on its own. Now, I've got this camera set up on a magnet mount, and this thing's gonna shake like crazy when I pound this piston in. So I'm gonna pause for a second and just uh, set the camera up on the bench. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start pushing this piston down. I've got my son here. Brian, can you come down here? Mm -hmm. You see the crank journal here? You see where that piston rod right there is? Yeah. Well, you make sure this does not hit this as I push it down, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna tap my ring compressor down all the way, and I'm gonna use the blunt end of my soft uh, mallet and just try to push that down in there. Oh my god, it went in like a glove. Unreal. That's success right there. Good deal. Um, all right, I'm gonna now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll the engine over so I can see it from the top and watch the crank and rod come together so I can get the bearing in and then get it all pushed up, lubed, and tightened down. All right, now I rolled the engine over, I've got my crank away from the piston. Ryan's gonna just start tapping it up a little bit for me so I can get enough clearance to put the bearing in a little bit. More, 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 more. That's good right there. Actually, no, yeah, that's gonna be okay, a little clear. Nope, I gotta push it back down a little bit. So I went too far, so I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Make sure the rod clears the crank so I can put the two pieces together. Now I've got clearance, so that's kind of where I want to be with that. Ryan, can you hold that up for me? 
Now I'm going to wipe down the inside of the rod. And I'm going to insert my bearing. The bearings, you just line up the tang with the chisel mark inside the rod. Then we got to lube it up. So I've got the ultra slick Permatex assembly lube here. Give it a good amount. I'm probably using way too much of this. I am sure I am. Do you need a towel? No. So I'm coating the bearing. Now I'm going to hold it and Ryan is going to go ahead and push it up against the, um, I'm just so paranoid about getting these or crank orientations wrong. And you know what? I do have this crank, this piston orientation completely wrong. So this piston's got to come back out. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking this is the first piston I'm putting in. So I think, catch this as it comes out, right? I'm thinking piston one because it's the first piston I'm putting it in, but I'm actually putting it in in the number two bore, like an idiot. So this is the first piston. It should be, it should be oriented to go in cylinder number one. So guys, I'm not cutting this out. This is gonna be part of the video because this is the stuff, first timers and the things you don't think about, you gotta catch when you're putting the engine together. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I fixed that mistake. I'm putting that piston in cylinder one just going to the other side because that's how it's supposed to be. So I've got that tap down, make sure my counter crank is oriented right away from the piston because that changes. So, because it's coming down this direction now. So now I've got the crank pointed away and I'm ready to push, start pushing this one in here. Perfect. Now, we're where we were before, we roll the engine over, and Ryan will push up as I guide the rod to the crank. I went ahead and left the bearing in so it's already lubed. Um, I got the bottom bearing in the rod cap. As it comes up, I'm looking for these manufacturing stamps to line up the rod cap, so this cap here goes with that rod by number, and I'm gonna match number to number, top and bottom. So let me go ahead and get this bearing with some lube so I'm just ready to go with it. Now keep in mind, you know, I'm, I'm doing this live, so to speak, or I should say it's not a dry fit, because I've already miked this. I know what my tolerances are. I'm not going to use plastic gauge on this because I actually use the right measurement tools. All right, Ryan, can you come on this side? I'm grabbing the cap with a few bolts. Grab that hammer. Am I just tapping out? Yeah, give me just a second. I got the, I've got control of the rod, so go ahead and just start tapping it up. Slow, get down so you have more control on it. Go slow. Keep going. You can go a little bit harder now. Looks like it's lining up good. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. What stop? Alright, keep going. Almost there, keep going. Your home, so you hear that change in sound, that tone change? I guys hope you caught that on the camera. That means we are home. So bearing, bottom bearing is lubed, top bearing is lubed, number stamp to number stamp on the rod. Push that down in place, and I got bolts in my pocket. I'm gonna, these came with ultra torque on them, the ARP stuff, I'm gonna put some more on. I have an open package here from the uh, main bolts. I did use new main bolts. I think I said in the other one of the videos, I didn't do studs, I went with bolts. So I'm putting some ultra torque on the threads and a little bit under the head of the bolt. So that's torqued down. 
I didn't glob it on because, like I said, these had these came actually in the box torqued down. I had to use the breaker to just get them apart from the box, which is, to be honest with you, is a little bit annoying. I wish they wouldn't do that. I imagine it's so there's no rattling and shipping or anything, but they sure were hard to break off the first time around. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run these down, get them snug, and then we'll get ready to torque. All right, so I got the caps on the rod. I have my, this is the spec sheet for torquing the rods that came with the kit from Eagle. It tells you the number of the ARP screw, which is the 8740. The head size, which is uh, 7 16 And I have the 3 8 inch bolts for the small block, and they go to 40 pounds. Now, if I had the ARP 2000 bolts, they would go to 43 pounds. So I don't, but I'm going to 40 pounds. Do that in two steps, three steps actually, from snug to middle to final. So I have snugged them. I'm gonna to go to 20, and then I am going to go to 40. And my personal feeling is anything under like 50 pound feet, it's better to use a 3 8 inch torque wrench than your half inch, because I think you just have more control over it. So I used 70 pounds on my main bolts, but these are only going to 40, so I'm gonna use my half, my 3 8 inch torque wrench to uh, put these on. Let me find my settings here. I'm gonna change over to get the light out of me. Make sure I'm on foot pounds and roll up to 20, which is right. Let me give it one more roll to see if that's 20. Nope, that's past 20. So there's 20 pound feet right there. Get my sockets which is on my extension. You shouldn't use an extension, that just a normal extension. If you're doing torquing, um, your torque wrench may come with an actual pre-stressed extension for torque. I have one for my half inch. I don't have, have one for my 3 8 uh, But don't use a long, regular extension. It'll throw your torque readings off. So I'm gonna go to, this is the 20 pass. All right, and you don't have to clank, clank, clank. That just wears your wrench out. This thing breaks at the poundage. So if you're doing that, it's like you don't trust it. Well, if you don't trust it, get a new one. One click, that's all you need, or you're just gonna ruin your torque wrench over time. Uh, let's see, there's going to 40 now. Making sure my old eyes get to the right spot. And there's 40. So we're going to give them another torquing. There's 40. And 40. I have just installed my first piston. Landmark right there. Now, I'm going to grab my uh, breaker and see how she spins. Make sure I go counterclock or clockwise, which is the direction of rotation. Nice and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this now opposed to number two, so I can put my number two cylinder in. But that's it for this video. That's I got to slow down. I, I'm honestly I'm shaking right now. This is a little bit nerve wracking because I've been building up for this for so long. And I made a mistake by, say, trying to film, feeling rushed, talking while you're trying to work instead of thinking while you're trying to work. Almost cost me a mistake that if I didn't catch would have destroyed my engine right there live on camera. That was not intentional. That's honest to God, real engine building right there. I almost put the wrong piston in the wrong bore. And if I hadn't caught that, at some point in the build, it may have dawned on me when I got to the last piston, it's like this piston is wrong because the whole orientation would have been wrong and eventually the last one would not have matched. I'd have to figure out which one was wrong and then go back and replace it. Or, hell, I could have been distracted when I put that one into and not caught it at all and ruined this entire thing right then and there. But uh, I didn't. Things have gone okay. I have a crank. I have a rotating piston. Um, 
so happy. I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Thanks for watching. Ryan, say goodnight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Caught him.